All right. Okay, back again. People seem to like looking at the chassis. The last video there, so I thought I'd just follow up and show you like what it's all like assembled and all the bits and pieces from the FPV upper upper section. It's kind of how I divide it in my mind. The lower section is the chassis and all that stuff, and then the upper portion is the FPV gear. So yeah, so we left off without this thing bolted to the car. Just remove the little diaper there. Um, so yeah, you can see FPV stuff mounts here to those plastic pieces. And then everything's mounted to this bar, except for, you know, the little thing, it's an antenna thing. So this is the roll bar and that's, um, you know, just keeps it from getting squashed when I flip. So yeah, the dash as well is attached to the FPV section. I think we'll go over like all the bits and pieces of the gimbal today as well. It's a little hard to see with it mounted to the car, but show you something here. <clears throat> I've got this other one more or less ready to go. So that's how it sits. Um, you got the three motors, your yaw motor, roll motor, and your pitch motor. And then your camera's mounted on top. So like, <clears throat> you can see the angled aluminum piece there. Anytime you see like the camera's just resting on there, that's like Gorilla Tape. Same with this. This is Gorilla Tape to the side. And uh, I'm just doing a bit of cable management here. We'll talk about that a bit more later. So, okay, yeah, the, we got the motors, the camera, of course. And now this little doohickey here is like a gyro inertia. It, it can sense what direction it's facing. And uh, so the gimbal use that to to understand where it's pointed and similarly in here there's another gyro so this one has to be static just fixed to the chassis and this one has to be on the camera and between the two of them it can uh, do its best to hold itself uh, steady so yeah it connects through these four wires to the the gimbal brains down here. And then, yeah, you got your three motor connections um, and your power connection. And then here is where you would uh, connect to, to the receiver. And the USB port here is for adjusting all the tuning and parameters on the gimbal. So, yeah, um, the one thing that does uh, make a difference here, so to help uh, the gimbal work really well, it's just got to be really solidly mounted, right, to the chassis, and then uh, the frame has to be super rigid, you can't have any flexing in there, or else, uh, you know, it just... Uh, if it's flexing, the, it can't use the motors to accommodate for that. Anyways, it, it, it makes it jiggle more. And then, yeah, everything's got to be balanced. So, you know, if you think of like an out of balance wheel, right? If there's more weight on one side of it or the other, then it's impossible to, to tune the gimbal 
very well, you know, because it's got to push harder in one way than the other way. So you're always kind of just making a compromise. So that's why I've got like a little bit of extra weight here on the front. That's just, you know, that's just extra mass. And then a little bit here too, just for tuning. And it's a bit of a, you know, trial and error thing. You can get it so good, but, you know, then we've got a wire dangling off the side. So, you know, it's uh, gonna be hard to make it perfect when, when things like that are going on. So that's, that's maybe one area where I could work to tidy it up a bit more is root wires through motors so they're uh, not affecting the balance of it. And you can see, if I get the angle right here, Here, I'll show you on this motor. So like through the yaw motor, I've run other wires. So here's the yaw motor here. It's got a hollow center. So you can run other motor wires through that and then they don't push or pull on the gimbal as it's trying to move and stay corrected. It's like focusing on the back of there. There we go. Yeah, so uh, that's all good. And then uh, if your chassis is in really good shape and there's no vibrations coming from it, that's uh, that helps a lot too. So the main culprit of vibrations in your drivetrain is your tires and wheels and they get off balance. So what I do with mine is I block, yeah, block the vent holes and then I vent them, I don't know if it's seeable, I vent them on, I vent the tires and then uh, I balance the wheel itself with just a bit of uh, hot glue and I use an old, an old axle stub I just um, you know, plonk this in my vise, and uh, I I took the bearings out. I took the shields off the bearings, and I'll give it a little spray with like WD-40 or some some really thin lubricant before uh, spinning the wheels, and then it get it gets it good enough. Um, the other thing I found just recently, actually, <clears throat> is that if your spur gear is in bad shape, it can cause a lot of vibration, and obviously. You know, your center drive shaft has to be uh, straight as well. So, yeah. Okay. So, the other thing I was going to touch on today was just like durability, because that's a question that comes up a lot. You know, it's quite a contraption here. Is it going to be tough? Like, there's a lot of moving pieces, whatever. But uh, I find, you know, building out of aluminum, as long as you don't heat it up, which makes it really soft, uh, if you build out of aluminum, it's going to be able to take, take the hits. And I've also, like, you know, try and keep as much weight off, off the camera end of the gimbal as possible. But, you know, you got to make it balanced as well, so... And then, yeah, so the circuit board's all black, right? That's uh, a waterproof coating, I add. And it's called liquid electrical tape. This stuff's great. It reinforces uh, electrical connections and waterproofs things. It's totally removable. Um, you just peel it off and it's, it's gone. So uh, that stuff works great. And I do a lot of like strain relief on wires. So like I don't want this wire just flopping around down here because eventually it's gonna break at like where it connects. Similar to this one here. Um, you know, this is the power wire. So I've got to connect and disconnect this guy all the time or whenever I put the gimbal on off. So I don't want to be pulling on it and have it 
tug against the the switch right and uh, that'll that'll just kill it eventually so <clears throat> yeah and that being said uh, this is the power switch for the gimbal and uh, the FPV transmitter those transmitters can consume a fair bit of power so when I hit like low voltage cut I want this handy so I can just off the VTX <clears throat> and uh, not not run my batteries down too much. Also, sometimes if I crash real bad, uh, the gimbal just needs a big old reset, so I just have to power cycle, cycle the whole thing. So I keep this handy. I keep the switch to my ESC handy too, so I can get out all of them with the body on and that just makes life easier. I load it up with the pack, get the body on, all on the bench, and then just typically walk to my running area. I've got a couple of good places around my place, so. So yeah. Um, right. Yeah, the other thing that keeps this good is like limit the range of motion. And that actually serves a couple purposes for us, so when it goes like cartwheeling down the road it won't uh you know spin itself all around and rip these wires and uh when it comes time to reset uh if it's more or less pointed in the direction it's supposed to it will like find center and point in the right way and then you'll be good to go you won't have to power cycle it but if it, you know, resets and thinks this is straight, um, then you'll have to just just power cycle things. So it helps uh, on the resets when when you have a limited range of motion. Um, and then yeah, the roll bar of course is key for uh, keeping impacts away from the gimbal itself. So yeah. Now I've got, uh, got a battery in this one. I can show you just the power up cycle. I'm just gonna turn everything on. Usually I like to turn the gimbal on, at least when I'm first getting running without uh, the car on because the car has fans and all sorts of little vibrations coming from that from them so my thinking is you know just want to have a really good calibration before uh, we start getting getting into the getting into running so a couple clean beeps there it's a good sign sometimes those beeps sound noisy and that usually means something's a bit bit off with it. I don't know if you can see that. But try again. Yeah, it's a little hard to see, isn't it? Get a bit more angle. So you can sort of tune how uh, Sort of like tight or loose the gimbal is as well like uh, I can tell it you know to not use so much motion to compensate I can sort of make it follow the, the car a bit more closely or really let it you know swing before it it wants to come back to center so that's all tunable and uh, yeah, so let's see. If I turn this on, the fans will get noisy, but we can do it anyways. Um, I'll show you just how the gimbal turns with the steering and then the hand tracker, head tracker as well. All right, so you saw it pitch down there. That's because I have sort of like look up and down on the transmitter. All 
right? And then it'll steer with the wheels as well. Right? And then I can turn on the head tracker. Sorry, it goes off my direction there for a sec, but and I start the head tracker. And uh, yeah, so that works pretty good. And there's a really, I'll turn this off. There's like a wide range of tunability and configurability with it. So, uh, you know, you can kind of set it up for different purposes. Uh, yeah, I can show you the reset too. So let's have a rollover. So I press the reset button, it's just this on my controller. And maybe it'll come back up. So we flip the car back over, press reset, or you know, unpress that button. And it's it's come back. It's not quite centered like roll wise, but at least you can get going again. Maybe if I reset again. Sometimes we'll actually like drive the car to a spot that's differently leveled and, and reset there. And that can correct that. So, you know, it's not with those problems. All right. <clears throat> so that's what I got for you today. We have a longer video, 17 minutes, but it's all good. Okay. Ciao.